My name is Maxim Schreier. I'm a writer, a Jewish-Russian immigrant, and a professor at Boston College. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about my new book of politics and pandemics, Songs of a Russian Immigrant. This is a book I wrote between December of last year and uh, June of this year, so that is between December 2019 and June 2020, mainly in response to election year politics and the COVID-19 pandemics. And I'd like to read several poems just to give you a sense of the themes, the formal structures, and the voice. Uh, the first one is called The Senate Trial. I often think about the Trump victory blaring from his trunk, the Constitution's butcher. His loyal senators behave like lazy generals who hate to ponder their future. He'll probably get away this time, imposing elephantine, he stomps out his critics. In our history's own court, will he remain the tweeting sort, the brazen face of politics? This next poem is called A Post-Soviet Guide to Coronavirus-Induced Insomnia. And it has to do with uh, staying awake at night, trying to fall back asleep, and thinking about my Soviet childhood and youth, and uh, sort of make, making a certain device, a certain, uh, a certain poetic device against insomnia. Lenin liked the Moonlight Sonata and Swiss pen knives. Stalin liked plays by Bulgakov and funerals of old Bolsheviks. Khrushchev liked corn on the cob and abstract painting. Brezhnev liked young nurses and boar hunting. Andropov liked chamber theater and lawn tennis. Chernyenka liked black holes and Siberian dumplings. Gorbachev liked failed empires and Louis Vuitton bags. Yeltsin liked any kind of vodka and brass bands. Putin liked pestilence and silence. This next poem is called La Chanson de Chien, and it has to do with uh, walking my family dog, Stella, a silver miniature poodle, and reflecting on how other dogs in a neighborhood park both go along with social distancing and refuse to go along with it. Dogs in the park maintain the proper distance. They probably sense their owner's reluctance to come together and take an open stance against the power of happenstance. The park is like a hospital. With masks on, the people's faces hide their contagion, yet every walker in the park could be an agent of the mysterious, virulent invasion. Some canine partners look quite attractive in their masks and gloves, hence the protective attire has become the new elective affinity, a fashion for the restive. The weeping willows clench their greening lancets. To them, of course, the human drama is senseless. With our dogs in our silly dresses, we look incredibly defenseless. Life in the park is growing distant, static. We stand apart and talk. An Irish medic, a Russian immigrant, a Parisian academic, another day of the pandemic. And lastly, a poem called Taking Stock of the Past Four Months, which has an epigraph from the American poet Edwin Arlington Robinson. There is nothing more to say. <coughs> Taking Stock of the Past Four Months. 
the world makes no sense. Over the past four months, it's lost its innocence. We've learned the art of distance. We've mastered wearing masks. The world makes no sense. We're living in a trance without its daily tasks. It's lost its innocence. What happened to the sense of life and simple tastes? The world makes no sense. What do we tell ourselves? That our world is nuts? It's lost its innocence? Will we regain our strengths? Will we recover our wits? The world makes no sense. It's lost its innocence. I hope you like the book and I look forward to talking to you again.